In this video, I'm going over the utilities I use in Windows 10 on pretty much any install that I perform. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over the desktop. I'm gonna show you all the utilities I run on pretty much any Windows install just because it makes my life so much easier. And if you're not running these utilities, you're really hamstringing yourself and costing yourself a lot of time, privacy, and security. The first piece of software, and it should come as no surprise, it's ONO Shut Up 10. It is basically an anti-spy tool that helps your privacy and security, and I absolutely love it. It makes your Windows a lot safer uh, than the default configuration out of the box. So let's go ahead and launch it just so you can kind of see what's in it and how to use it. So this is my stream box and I wanted it kind of stuck in time. So I've even disabled Windows updates, which I don't recommend any users do. I've simply done it because I don't do anything on this machine other than use it for streaming. So that's why I did that. I want it as clean as possible. So in here, if you go up to actions, what I'd recommend almost every user do is apply only recommended actions. This disables most of all the privacy features that are just common sense that really you shouldn't have enabled anyways, but they come enabled by default. So that's why I always recommend everyone do apply only recommended actions. If you're somewhat of a paranoid, I would recommend probably the recommended and somewhat recommended settings. Now I've done apply all settings which disables Windows updates and other things. This is for people that don't use their computer for internet browsing. I don't use this machine for internet browsing, therefore I don't really care that Windows updates are disabled and I'm also behind a protected network to where this machine really isn't exposed to a whole lot of anything other than me using it for streaming. So with that said, I highly recommend this software, run it on every system because I sure as heck love it. It saved me a ton of time than manually ticking all these boxes through the settings menu, which is phenomenal. The next piece of software is gonna be Night Night. It is also a great piece of software. I, anytime I have a fresh install, I'm like, okay, what web browser do I need? I tick it. I come down here, you need a 7-zip for your 7-zip files, and it also opens RAR files as well. And then I come over and hit VLC because you need VLC to play all the movie files and other things that don't come native to Windows. And then usually I might install Steam if it may, might be a gaming PC. I don't run any of these runtimes. Most of this is kind of obsolete at this point and not needed in most instances. Imaging, there's some really good tools that I absolutely love. GIMP uh, for image editing if you're not a Photoshop guy. Uh, IR Fans View is great as a default photo viewer because the default for Windows 10, especially in the newer versions of Windows 10, uh, they've pretty much ripped out the Windows viewer and now they force you to use like Paint 3D and some other things that are just really slow and clunky and this uh, software is far better than that. Greenshot is a fantastic screenshot tool. Now I'm kind of old school. I loved the snipping tool from Windows 7 and they've pretty much carried that through Windows 10. However, the writing's kind of on the wall for it. They've released Snip and Sketch for Windows 10, that app. You can try it out, but if Windows isn't your jam for these default apps, Greenshot offers a lot more utility and it is just far better product and it's free as well. As far as documents, I would love to recommend a free PDF viewer, but really when it comes to PDFs on Windows, you're pretty much using Adobe PDF, uh, especially in business. I'm in business a lot uh, at a law firm, and if you're working at a law firm, you need to mess around with portfolios and many other things that Adobe has made proprietary. It is uh, kind of a necessary evil when it comes to PDF editing or PDF modification. And utilities. Now, TeamViewer is good for remoting into someone's computer or having them remote into yours. Image Burner for CDs and DVDs, but I don't really burn any of those anymore. It's been years and years, and I don't think I even have a PC with a burner on it anymore. I'd have to hook it up via USB. 
Um, the other utility on here that is very powerful is WinDIR stat. It kind of shows you where all the junk is in your computer. So if you download a 20 gig file somewhere and you forget where it is, WinDIR stat will have a good way of finding it. You can just click in it using their GUI view mode, which is great. It kind of shows you where everything's distributed across your system. So this is great for clearing out a system, especially after running the next utility I'm about to go into. Uh, Classic Start is great for Windows 8. I use Classic Start all the time during Windows 8 because I hated the start screen. Uh, these days in Windows 10, I'm fine with the, the defaults here. As far as free antivirus, I don't recommend any free antivirus. Stick with what's in Windows 10 at this point in time. Most of the free antivirus is ad supported and frankly, just annoying. It's almost like a piece of malware itself. Uh, when it comes to paid antivirus though, let's say you want the extra protection, I highly recommend Webroot Secure Anywhere, not sponsored. I just really like them and I've used them for years. I just absolutely love that piece of software. It annoys the hell out of users when they download something they shouldn't and it also notifies me about it in a business environment. But for residential, it's really a great piece of protection software that goes above and beyond uh, the defaults that come with Windows Defender. And then developer tools. I love Notepad++. It's just a far better utility than standard Notepad. Uh, WinSCP is great for when you're remoting into and transferring files from like remote servers such as VPS machines and Google Cloud Platform or Amazon Web Services. I would be lost without WinSCP when I'm on a Windows system. And then PuTTY if you want to SSH or run terminal on through a serial cable. It is fantastic for those uses. Uh, the rest of these, I don't really use that much. And then once you've selected all those, you would just selectly hit Get My Night Night. It would go ahead and see all those and give you a nice executable. You run this, it downloads the latest and greatest version and installs it for you. Fantastic utility, saves hours of time on a new install. Next up is gonna be BleachBit. Now, this comes in Linux and Windows flavors. It is free and open software, so it is open source. You can go check that out. If you go to Windows, you can go ahead and download this. I already have it installed on my machine, so I'm gonna show, the, show you that. Um, now, I don't recommend ticking every single option because that will be very slow. Uh, many options I would recommend that do take some time is like the temporary files here. Uh, that's worth going through and making sure that those are deleted. Um, other notable things in here is free disk space. I almost always leave this unchecked because it writes over free disk space, which is extremely time intensive and it really degrades your disk. It puts a lot of wear and tear on it. Unless there's something really bad you want no one ever finding, there's real no reason to ever tick this box. And honestly, I'm kind of old school. If there's something I really don't want someone to find on a hard drive, I pull out my drill and put a hole through that hard drive. There's no recovering that. So that is bleach bit. Once you've done that, you just simply hit clean and delete. It goes through, finds everything it can when it comes to temporary files and deletes them. And it does a great job. Do not use CC cleaner and other utilities. Most of them bloat up your system. They have monitoring services and overall just poor performance where bleach bit is just so fast and it does a far better job in my opinion. There's no reason to use anything else for deleting temporary files when there's bleach bit. And the last um, thing I highly recommend, just Google debloat Windows 10. I created a, a page last year and you know I get probably around 1,000 to 2,000 hits a day just from people debloating Windows 10 running through this script. I also did a walkthrough on actually running this. You can run that as well. And I've done many features of this in past videos. And if you don't want to follow any of my instructions, could just go straight to the GitHub page and download and run this PowerShell script. It's fantastic. It's constantly updated. Like I said, those are year old posts and videos. And as you see, they're still updating this script five days ago. So here it is almost a full year later in 2019 and this script just keeps on trucking. I love the guy that maintains this. If you have any extra money, throw it his way. 
Now the machine I did all this tonight on was my stream box. I stream on Twitch on Tuesday, Thursday nights. So if you would like to ask me a question in person, be sure and hit me up. My link is in the description below. Just click on that and you can follow me there and ask me in person. If you have any questions, feel free. I open up my stream to pretty much everybody. So uh, come on over, hit me up. If you have a question, I always like hearing issues. It also gives me a lot of ideas for future videos. So with that said, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos and I'll see you in the next video.